This is a half kilogram bottle of Anycubic ABS like resin, the Pro 2 version. I was sent this resin to review for free. Um, if you wanted to purchase it, it would cost you $20. So this is the half kilogram bottle. You can also purchase it in the one kilogram bottle size. Um, and this is the gray color. It has, you know, shake well before use. And essentially it claims that it's going to have high strength, uh, good resistance to breaking, so good elasticity before it breaks. Um, it also claims low odor, but so far I've never found any 3D printing resin that's really low odor. But we'll give it a shot and see. I'm still going to be cracking the uh, garage doors open to let some um, ventilation come in while using this. So I'm going to go print a test part with this and compare it to my previous resin. All right, I shook this guy up, and it does have a foil seal, so on first use, you are going to have to open that foil seal. So here, you can see one of these items was still working, and all of the others, at some point, had gotten stuck to the bottom of the thing here. Um, and so I'm going to have to research settings and render this part with the exact correct settings for this to give it a fair shot. So it took me several tries and probably half this bottle of resin to dial in my settings and get everything working so that I could print the parts I wanted to print repeatedly and accurately. Um, I had problems. So first of all, the default settings that I was trying to use for the exposure time were way too low and it was just sticking to my film. Um, so I replaced the film and that helped a little bit and I upped the um, exposure time, and I got the exposure time such that my exposure test print printed pretty darn well. Um, had a little bit of problem because it was stuck to the back here super, super well, a whole bunch of supports there, and it kind of cracked as I was taking it off, but the actual quality was, was pretty darn good in here. Um, so before I did that, I had issues with this, sometimes it just stop, um, and I had issues with problems um, and I trace these issues down to the fact that I was using the small supports. Um, if you use the large supports, it works a lot better. Um, and so what would happen is that with these small supports, it would pull away from the supports and it would either get stuck to the film or in cases like this where it kind of recovered, um, it wasn't great because it would make weird shapes and, and bad shapes. So, you know, like an example like this is just barely off a little bit on that bottom. Um, and I had a lot of good ones, you know, these are perfectly acceptable parts here. Um, but I had those types of issues when I was using the small supports. And these small supports had worked perfectly with my previous resin but I was running into issues with the small supports with this particular resin. Using previously a resin that is by the same manufacturer as the printer, and so you know the suggested settings are dialed in perfectly, and it worked great. Um, and so I, it's not the fault of this resin that it took me a while to dial in the settings, but it did take me a while to do that. So that's a danger of using a resin from a brand that's not the same brand as your printer, is you kind of got to figure out the settings that work on your own. So it took me a while to do that. Um, I never got some settings that would work with the small supports. So, you know, I'm getting pieces like this that are just not usable. Um, and so because of that, because I couldn't use the small supports, I had to switch over to big supports, which means I print 10 of these instead of 12 of these per batch. So the yield goes down a little bit. I also am wasting more resin on support material. Um, I don't know how easy these are to remove compared to the small supports. They take more force than the small supports to remove, but the part looks like the little dots from the support are about the same size. Um, incidentally, these are Batanov focusing masks for a telescope. Um, and so when I get these out of the printer, I then put them into a threaded insert here, and I basically just make sure that the threads work. So I kind of chase the threads, and if there's any tiny little dots from the support, um, it'll knock them off when I do that. Um, you know, so this particular one here threads in there just fine. So mechanically, tolerance-wise, the print was very good. The threading is the correct size. 
um, you know, the Batonov mask is nice and clean, so everything worked well with the print once I got the settings dialed in, and using these larger supports is not necessarily hurting the quality of the print, um, it just means because they take up more space, I can't quite get as many of them in one batch as I did before. Because I, I really optimized this thing to you know print 12 in a batch. Um, and so now I'm doing 10 in a batch with this particular stuff. So you can make it work. It's going to take some tweaks. Um, it seems to be stickier. It seems to want to stick to the film more than the resin I was using before. So you might have to do things like longer exposure times, bigger and more support to counteract that desire to stick to the film. Okay, so the question then becomes, is it worth printing in ABS light versus my other material? Um, and so, you know, these two guys here, functionally basically the same, obviously the color's a little different, but that's just the color I picked. Um, I want to feel like the strength of this guy and how it is different from this one over here. Um, so I've never actually tried breaking one of these by hand, so we're going to give that a shot. And so I heard it cracking there, and so my little little bits in here are cracking when I push on it. You know, so I can push those out and crack those out. So let's try doing that on this other guy. I'll try to do it in this same manner here. That is definitely stronger. Uh, let me try the other direction. Wow. I'm impressed there because these guys here, you know, I can push those out with my thumb. Um, I'm putting some effort in. You know, they're pretty strong. They're strong enough for the, 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 the use here, but I could push those out. Whereas this guy here, I am struggling to get those to separate. There, I got a crack. I heard a crack. Let me see if I can get more. Okay, I got another crack. I don't want to hurt my thumb here. But yes, so this ABS-like resin is stronger than what I was using before. So if you're looking for stronger prints that are less likely to break with a crack, it might be worth tuning your parameters here. Okay, there I'm with two hands using some thumbnail. I'm starting to break. Oh, I actually broke the side before I broke all those little pieces off. Um, so that was my next text was, was to break this thing. So let me just um, push on this guy. Okay, so that did a snap and crack. It popped in two places. Here I, I have this broken in, in one place. Um, now I'm going to pull this whole ring apart and you'll see kind of how far it goes. So I'm, I'm basically just pulling it straight here. There, it, it snapped. Let's see if I can, it's not quite, you know, most of those are, are separate, so let's see if I can do that same type of thing here. You can ignore those little bits that are on the inside. It snapped too. It, it felt, that snap felt about the same as this snap. Um, so it does appear to be stronger from a tensile standpoint, you know, pulling these little bits in the inside out definitely, you know, was, was more effort and harder to do. You know, like here, I'm trying to get those little bits out, um, and they are tough to get those guys out. Whereas here, you know, I can just grab those and pop them off. Um, so yes, a little bit trickier, more finicky to print with. The strength and uh, kind of durability and maybe maybe a little bit of even flexibility there is there. Um, so it definitely has different mechanical properties than my default resin. Um, and so if you're looking for something that needs to be strong like that, this definitely might be worth tuning in the settings on your printer. Now, for my particular application, I probably don't need that super high strength because this isn't really a high stress part. Um, but there's certainly, it's certainly functional for what I'm using it for here. Um, I'm not sure if I need the extra strength for this particular part. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for the kind of ABS-like, a little bit stronger print, this does seem to deliver that. There are downsides in that you're going to have to tune your printer to work with it, um, and it may want to stick to your print bed a little more than other resins. Now, one thing I can say is they claim low odor, and it is definitely lower odor than my other low odor resin. Um, so this resin here, you know, obviously you want to still use ventilation. It has a smell. It's not no odor, but it was very good from an odor standpoint. So, you know, it was definitely better than what I was using before. It was, the other stuff claimed to be low odor as well, but this definitely delivered on the low odor.